I think one of the biggest problems some women face while dating and even in relationships is that they meet a man they like and they're really attracted to him, so they go out on a couple of dates, perhaps they even start a relationship, but then the moment comes where that man, for some reason, makes them feel that they are not good enough. And that really hurts. And it can even happen with a good guy too, because he may not be doing it deliberately, of course. So these women then feel like as if they really have to fight for his attention or to keep him interested, for him to have some time available, for him to just reply or to not ghost them and so on, for him to just work a little bit on that relationship together. So these women start to think, okay, dating is really hard and relationships are even worse. So let's talk about wine for a second. Let's suppose that I meet a woman and she loves, she adores white wine. It's the only kind of alcohol she likes. But I then try to convince her that a certain red wine is actually way better than any white wine on the market. Well, good luck. No amount of effort will obviously change her mind. That red wine may have won prizes, may smell better, may look better or sexier, may taste better, may give her compliments, may be really intelligent, may be really nice to her and so on. It would not matter. It doesn't matter. If no other wine is available on the menu and she really needs a drink, then she may perhaps go for a glass of red wine as a backup. But as soon as there's a bottle of white wine in the area, that red wine will have to wonder where all of this is going. Because the red wine will always feel like as if it's not enough, not good enough. And that's correct. It isn't enough. Not for her. Red wine will never be good enough for her, no matter how hard it tries. But the question is, does that say anything about the quality and the attractiveness of that red wine? I see a lot of women put a lot of effort in the wrong men. And when I say that a man is the wrong guy for a woman, I'm not necessarily talking about him being a bad boy or a bad man and so on. Because of course, even a good guy can be the wrong man for a woman. And when he is, it doesn't matter who she is how great she is, what her personality is like, how beautiful she is, how attractive she is, how sexy she is, how good she is to him, how great she smells, how intelligent she is. It will not even matter how much attraction there is between the both of them. She will always have to wonder where all of this is going, where that relationship is going. And the thing is that just like with the wine, no amount of effort can change that because he's the wrong guy for her. He cannot possibly give her a healthy and a fulfilling relationship. Now she's missing another very important thing here and that's what this video is also about. My name is Geert. Given how super easy that is to pronounce in English, I also use the pen name Brian Knox. I'm an author. I write books about dating and relationships and other topics. And here's the thing. If that woman meets a couple of guys who are not interested at all or guys she starts dating that are interested at first but then lose interest rapidly, then she may start to believe that there's something wrong with her, that she's not beautiful enough, not smart enough, not attractive enough, not sexy enough, or not enough in general. Just like the red wine may start to think in the example I just gave you. And don't worry, I know that wine cannot actually think, but you can talk to your glass of wine, and if you drank enough of it, it may even start to talk back. Anyway, all of this is going to destroy her self-esteem. It's going to be really bad for her confidence, and it will feel really bad. However, in my example, that white wine lady, her reaction to the red wine didn't say anything about the quality of the red wine. It said everything about her personal preferences. She's a white wine lady. But a red wine connoisseur, an expert, may tell us that it's the best red wine on the planet because he's the right person for that red wine. So I sincerely believe that we should all, as a species, stop wasting time on people that are not right for us. And not just in romantic relationships, by the way, because the crazy thing is that sometimes the more incompatible we are with a certain person, yeah, the harder we may try to be liked by that particular person. <laughs> That's just crazy. That's uh, one of the many silly mind games that we have to learn to deal with in life. And in this case, it's because that will create a huge challenge and because as a human, we love to be liked. However, and this is the biggest mind game, it makes us miss out on the people we are actually compatible with. So the red wine may even start to dismiss the loving attention it's getting from the wine connoisseur. Wow, Mr. Red Wine Connoisseur, I really want to thank you for this beautiful award. I, I have no words for this. I, I don't even know where to begin, how to explain how much this award means to me. Ooh, the white wine lady. So, how do I make her love me? And that is ridiculous because she will never love red wine. But you know what a red wine will think? Yeah, 
I know that, but hey, if I try hard enough, if I wait long enough, then White Wine Lady will eventually fall for me. I will grow on her, because you know what? She likes wine. It's not that she loves beer or mimosas, it's wine, and I am wine. And you know what? My friends tell me that I am a great wine. I'm a very attractive wine, so now I just have to make her see it. Yeah, cool, but that's BS. Because the goal in our love life is to find our connoisseurs. The people who like us for who we are, naturally, when we're not playing any games, when we're not wearing a mask, when we're not trying, when we're not playing a role. People that make our love life and our romantic relationship easier, not harder. And I say easier because a romantic relationship will obviously never be easy, but the connoisseurs, so the right people for us, the right people to start dating or to start a relationship with, they will help us because they like us. They make it easier, not harder. And we will feel that they are carrying the load of that relationship together with us. And the thing is, that often starts the very first second you meet them. When you meet one of your many connoisseurs, the first date will go really well. The second date will be even more awesome. By the third date, the both of you will believe that you have finally found the one. The perfect match. It will feel that way. The conversations will be pretty easy. It's not hard to find something to talk about because the both of you can really relate. Getting to that first kiss, not hard because it's inevitable. Just like in those romantic comedies or any romantic movie, it doesn't matter what types of obstacles are thrown at you, you will move past that. That first date, that first kiss, that relationship, they are inevitable because you both want it. Because the both of you do not need to be convinced that the two of you are right for each other and it will feel right. So that part is easy. It will still be challenging, it will still require some work, but here's what's not easy at all. Finding that person. Finding those connoisseurs. That's really hard. Because no matter who you are, and seriously, it doesn't matter how famous, how attractive, how cool, how great, how rich, how sexy, how successful you are, finding those connoisseurs is always really hard. For everybody. I think you would be surprised of some of the really famous people that contact me. Super attractive, have millions of followers, millions of admirers and fans, but even for them it's really hard. It's never easy for anybody because there are many more people we are not compatible with or people that want us for the wrong reasons compared to the connoisseurs that were made for us. So it's hard. And that's why I always say that we shouldn't waste time in our love life. That's why we should never try to convince anyone to like us, to be with us, to stick around. That's why as soon as someone loses interest consistently or starts to ghost us and so on, we say bye-bye and we move on. If someone doesn't like the type of wine you are, you hand them the menu and you leave the table. Now to end this video, here's the good news. We only need one person. One. One connoisseur who doesn't doubt our greatness because they can see it straight out of the box. We don't have to try. We don't have to convince them to go out on a date with us, to have that first kiss, to start a relationship with us, to eventually move in together, perhaps buy a plant together or take a huge risk and get a goldfish together. Quite the responsibility. There's nothing they would rather do than to live happily ever after with us. That's why they are a connoisseur. So if you want more techniques that I'm not sharing over here, you can find those on the website, briannox.com. My books and my audiobooks, they can be found on Amazon. You can type my pen name, Brian Knox, in the search bar. There will be links to everything underneath the video in the description as well. But I want to take a moment to thank you for watching until the very end of this video, because that proves that you're quite the connoisseur. So thank you for doing that, and I hope to see you in another video.